Hello everyone, I'm back again. I wanted to give you an update and especially for those who are listening who are very new to Bible prophecy and the end times and uh, also new to my channel. I thought it'd be a good idea to talk and cover this subject matter as briefly as possible and as simply as possible, God willing. What is the beast? When I talk about Bible prophecy, the beast, what do I mean by that? The beast is a word that is used in the word of God in the book of Revelation. The dragon is also another name that the word of God mentions in, again, the book of Revelation. So these are words that the word of God has disclosed to us, friends, so that we are better informed about the nature, the behavior, the characteristics of this entity that is coming in the future. And I believe this entity has been forming and it's only a matter of time, I believe now, when we will see the fulfillment of this uh, entity, this monstrosity, which is the beast. I have a few images on screen, as you can see. Again, I'm going to keep this video as short as possible and as brief as possible and make it easy. So the beast empire, it's there's two beasts mentioned in the book of Revelation. The first beast is the dragon who gives authority to one man. He allows him to have great authority and power. But remember, the Lord our God is sovereign. And without his permission, nothing can happen. Okay? The second beast is what? Well, firstly, the first beast is called the beast of the sea. And the second beast is called the beast of the earth. It's a false prophet, the second one, who exercises um, <clears throat> the authority excuse me, of the first beast, which is the beast of the sea. Imagery that I have in front of you here is on the left, the dragon, as mentioned in the book of Revelation, chapter 12. And on the right is another ghastly image, another beast, as mentioned in the book of Revelation, chapter 13. And I want to go there now and just show you what the Word of God says about these entities and it's important that we read these scriptures so beginning in the book of revelation chapter 12 let's read the woman the child and the dragon now in this portion of scripture we have three particular entities mentioned here and this is i would say this is my understanding of it at least this is a panoramic depiction of the great ancient enmity between the woman and her seed and Satan and his seed. And this is another imagery here disclosed to us in the book of Revelation chapter 12 because that enmity is coming to a head in the end times. Okay, friends? The woman, the child and the dragon. Verse 1, it reads, <clears throat> Now a great sign appeared in heaven. Let me get my cursor. A woman clothed with the sun, with the moon under her feet, and on her head a garland of twelve stars. I've spoken about this subject matter in previous messages. If you would like some more information, there's a particular video I've done regarding the woman, the child, and the dragon. So please look out for that in my playlist section. Verse 2. Then being with child, she cried out in labor and in pain to give birth. And another sign appeared in heaven. Behold, a great fiery red dragon. There's the dragon. Having seven heads and ten horns and seven diadems on his heads. His tail drew a third of the stars of heaven and threw them to the earth. And the dragon stood before the woman who was ready to give birth to devour her child as soon as it was born. She bore a male child who was to rule all nations with a rod of iron. And her child was caught up to God and his throne. Then the woman fled into the wilderness. By the way, the child is the Lord Jesus. Verse 6. Then the woman fled into the wilderness where she has a place prepared by God that they should feed her there 1,260 days. Let's carry on. Verse 7. And war broke out in heaven. Michael and his angels fought to the dragon, and the dragon and his angels fought. But they did not prevail, nor was a place found for them in heaven any longer. 
So the great dragon was cast out, that serpent of old, called the devil and Satan. This is a real pa person, you guys. And we're going to see the full extent of his ugliness in the future. Let's carry on. Who deceives the whole world. He was cast to the earth and his angels were cast out with him. The Lord Jesus Christ is going to, oh my goodness, he's going to absolutely, utterly destroy these entities, you guys. Verse 10, then I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, now salvation and strength and the kingdom of our God and the power of his Christ have come. For the accuser of our brethren, who accused them before our God day and night, has been cast down. Verse 11, and they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony. And they did not love their lives to the death. So in order for us to be overcomers in the end times, friends, we need to know exactly what it is that we're preparing for, right? This is why Bible prophecy is important. It's the word of God. We don't pick and choose the word of God. We don't be very selective with what parts of the word of God we want to read and study and talk about. No, we don't do that. We take the full counsel of God and we meditate on these scriptures and especially now more than ever. We're living in really precarious times and I believe that this entity is forming and so we need to know what it is we're looking out for, you guys. Let's carry on. Verse 12. Therefore rejoice, O heavens, and you who dwell in them. Woe to the inhabitants of the earth and the sea, for the devil has come down to you having great wrath, because he knows that he has a short time. Think about this. We're going to know when this moment in history is going to come. And the world is going to be clueless, you guys. You and I are going to understand, because we read the word, we go over the scriptures, we go back and forth over the pages and we diligently seek for the truth and for understanding. And the Lord, he's so good, he's so faithful, he helps us. But the world in the darkness are not going to know what's happening. And they're going to need to know, friends. So it's a good time now to get equipped, to get familiarized with these scriptures so we understand what's to come. Because when people won't have a clue and they're fearful and panicked, we will have the answers. Okay, let's carry on. Verse 13. Now when the dragon saw that he'd been cast to the earth, he persecuted the woman who gave birth to the male child. But the woman was given two wings of a great eagle, that she might fly to the wilderness to her place, where she is nourished for a time, at times and half a time, from the presence of the serpent. This same entity is a dragon and a serpent. It's the same enemy of the lord god the same enemy you guys the same enemy of the woman back in the garden of eden verse 15 so the serpent spewed out of his mouth like a flood after the woman the water he spewed out of his mouth that he might cause her to be carried away by the flood but the earth helped the woman and the earth opened its mouth and swallowed up the flood which the dragon had spewed out of his mouth and the dragon was enraged with the woman and he went to make war with the rest of her offspring. Again, this is yet to happen in the future, but persecution of the saints has been happening for centuries now. It's just going to intensify and increase as we draw near to the return of the Lord Jesus, who's coming, returning in great judgment and a lot of wrath. Who? Keep the commandments of God and have the testimony of Jesus Christ. That's how, friends, we are overcomers. By keeping the commandments of God and the testimony of Jesus Christ and by the blood of the Lamb. Now in Revelation 13, if we continue over to the next chapter, it gives us another glimpse of the same dragon, this entity, but it breaks it down with more information, with more detail. The beast from the sea, verse 1. Then I stood on the sand of the sea. <clears throat> There's noise again in my, in my backyard over there. Well, not mine, it's the neighbours. Then I stood on the sand of the sea, and I saw a beast rising up out of the sea, having seven heads and ten horns. Do you see now why there was this imagery of the dragon and this beast on the right with these heads. 
<clears throat> is to illustrate what the scripture says. Now the beast which I saw, verse 2, was like a leopard. His feet were like the feet of a bear and his mouth like the mouth of a lion. These are kingdoms, but they're used as um, the language used here, the leopard, the bear and the lion is to show the beastly monst monstrous nature of this entity. Let's carry on. The dragon that we just read about in chapter 12, Revelation, gave him, who's him, the Antichrist, the beast. The beast is both the man and his kingdom. The dragon gave him his power, his, uh, his throne and great authority. And I saw one of his heads as if it had been mortally wounded and his deadly wound was healed and all the world marveled and followed the beast. So they worshipped the dragon who gave authority to the beast and they worshipped the beast saying, who is like the beast? Who is able to make war with him? <clears throat> I'm trying to read the word without too much interruptions. Verse 5. And he was given a mouth, speaking great things and blasphemies. And he was given authority to continue for 42 months. Literally, you guys, three and a half years. This guy is going to wreak havoc on the earth. But I'll show you, for those who are new to my channel and new to this message, I'll show you the region where this entity is going to arise from. Verse 6. <clears throat> then he opened his mouth in blasphemy against God. To blaspheme his name, his tabernacle, and those who dwell in heaven. It was granted to him to make war. There's that war language again. And if you checked out my last video, I spoke to you about the Islamic eschatology comparison with the Word of God and how Satan has, <clears throat> I believe, anyhow, designed Islam as the end days vehicle to usher in the Antichrist beast kingdom. And with Islam and with the, if you understand the doctrine of jihad, this will make more sense to you. Let me repeat that. Verse 7. It was granted to him to make war with the saints and to overcome them. And to overcome them, you guys. But we overcome Satan. How? By the word of our testimony and by the blood of the Lamb. Let's carry on. And authority was given him over every tribe, tongue, and nation. <clears throat> All who dwell on the earth will worship him, whose names have not been written in the book of life of the Lamb, slain from the foundation of the world. Notice, the Lamb of God is so central to the book of Revelation. The same Jesus. <coughs> Excuse me. If anyone has an ear, let him hear. He who leads into captivity shall go into captivity. He who kills with the sword must be killed with the sword. Here is the patience and faith of the saints. When this happens, when captivity comes, friends, when death by the sword comes to us, we overcome with patience and with faith. Okay? <coughs> Verse 11. <clears throat> here comes your false prophet the beast from the earth so the beast friends is a combination of a man who is given demonic power demonic authority a kingdom a demonic kingdom and he has a sidekick who joins his kingdom He's considered the false prophet according to the word of God. So it's the beast is very simple to understand when we go back to the text and read what it says. Then I saw another beast coming up out of the earth. And he had two horns, which is, um, represents authority. Um, authority, his office. He had two horns like a lamb and spoke like a dragon he's going to look peaceful harmless yet he's inspired of the dragon utterly satanic verse 12 and he exercises 
all the authority of the first beast in his presence. So they're together. The beast from the sea and the beast from the earth, they're going to operate together. There's two men who are going to be um, satanically inspired in this confederation. I'll show you. And causes the earth and those who dwell in it to worship the first beast, whose deadly wound was healed. And if you are familiar with my channel, and if you're not, please refer to my playlist, Islam, the Antichrist, and Mystery Babylon. And in that playlist, I talk at length in detail about this scripture, and I go into a lot more detail regarding Saudi Arabia and the other Islamic nations. Verse 13. He performs great signs so that he even makes fire come down from, from heaven on the earth in the sight of men. This is literally what he's going to do, you guys. And he deceives those who dwell on the earth by those signs which he was granted to do in the sight of the beast. Telling those who dwell on the earth to make an image to the beast who was wounded by the sword and lived. He was granted power to give breath to the image of the beast that the image of the beast should both speak and cause as many as would not worship the image of the beast to be killed. There will be no tolerance when this beast is formed and when the false prophet shows up, he's going to make sure to enforce the worship of the dragon, the worship of the beast and the allegiance given to the image of the beast. He's the one who enforces it. Verse 16, he causes all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and slave, to receive a mark on their right hand or on their foreheads. And that no one may buy or sell except one who has the mark or the name of the beast or the number of his name. We'll understand that better the closer we get to that time. And I don't want to speculate regarding the number, but I believe it's all based on economy. Because it shows that people are going to be restricted to buying and selling unless they have the mark. Verse 18, here is the wisdom. Here is wisdom. Let him who has understanding calculate the number of the beast. For it is the number of a man. His number is 666. So that's the beast described in the book of Revelation chapter 12 um, and chapter 13. Now this image here is taken from the book of Daniel. And in the book of Daniel in chapter 2, <clears throat> but it's also referring to Daniel chapter 7. In both of those chapters, the word of God describes to us entities, kingdoms that would form in the end times to make up this anti-God, anti-Christ, anti-Israel, anti-saints confederation. This is the statue depicted here the head of gold silver here bronze and iron but on the right you see it says the lion the bear and the leopard greco macedonia medes and persians the babylon the great old babylon represented by the lion and the gold it's a really good image if you'd like me to send it to you or what i can do is attach this under the description of this video so you can zoom in and have a, a good look at it. I think it's really, really interesting. Very well put together. This image is described, if we go to Daniel, uh, let's see. I haven't got Daniel chapter 2 at the moment. But if you read the whole book of Daniel chapter 2, the chapter, it will talk to you about that very image, that um, the statue. But in Daniel 7, because I'm talking about the beast <laughs> with the ten horns, I'm going to show you where it is also mentioned here in the book of Daniel chapter 7. Let's begin with, let's see, verse 2. Daniel spoke saying, <coughs> sorry, oh, I saw in my vision by night and behold the four winds of heaven were stirring up the great sea, also known as the Mediterranean. And notice in the book of Revelation, chapter 13, let me go back over there. There's nothing particularly mysterious about the region, you guys. The word of God tells us where it's coming out of. Remember, scripture interprets scripture. We understand that that's what the word of God does, right? 
in Revelation chapter 13, verse 1, it says, And I saw a beast rising up out of the sea. It's the same sea, you guys, as Daniel chapter 7's um, understanding is the great sea, as mentioned there in verse 2. Let's carry on. Verse 3 and read. The four great beasts, remember they were all beasts, and four great beasts came up from the sea, each different from the other. The first was like a lion, Babylon, and, the, and had eagle's wings. I watched till its wings were plucked off and it was lifted up from the earth and made to stand on two feet like a man, and a man's heart was given to it. Verse 5, and suddenly another beast, a second, like a bear, Medo-Persia. It was raised up on one side and had three ribs in its mouth between its teeth. And they said thus to it, Arise, devour much flesh. Verse 6. After this I looked and there was another, a leopard, your um, Grecian Macedonian, which had on its back four wings of a bird. The beast also had four heads and dominion was given to it. Verse 7. Listen to this, you guys. After this, I saw in the night visions, and behold, a fourth beast. This one is the worst out of them all. It's the final beast. Dreadful and terrible, exceedingly strong, but Jesus Christ will crush them on his return. Glory to God. It had huge iron teeth. It was devouring, breaking in pieces, trampling the residue with its feet, and if Again, if you're new to my channel and you're new to Bible prophecy, I have the view that this end times final Antichrist beast kingdom will be Islamic with a mixture of Sunnis and Shiites and some Arabs, Turks, Persians, Africans, but it will be Islamic. It was different from all the beasts that were before it and it had, what does it have? Ten horns. So the beast is a man who's been given the kingdom. The kingdom will include 10 rulers who come in and give their allegiance to this one guy, the beast. But combined and together, the coalition makes up the entity, the antichrist, the beast, the beast of the sea, the entity. Okay, does that make sense? Verse 8. <clears throat> I was considering the horns and there was another horn, a little one, coming up among them before whom three of the first horns were plucked out by the roots, and there in this horn were eyes like the eyes of a man and a mouth speaking pompous words. You guys, the more I've been reading the Word of God, Bible prophecy, it's been years and years now, the more I'm re-examining my position continually. I would like to share with you what I've discovered regarding the Kurdish people and why i believe it's possible that this this guy the antichrist the son of perdition may very well come out from that region and i'll explain why when i do the message <clears throat> and there in this horn were eyes like the eyes of a man and a mouth speaking pompous words but look what happens it's nothing to fear not to be terrified regarding this final beast we have so much good to look forward to. The return of Jesus Christ, you guys, the King of glory. Listen to this, verse 9. I watched till thrones were put in place, and the Ancient of Days was seated. His garment was white as snow, and the hair of his head was like pure wool. His throne was a fiery flame, its wheels a burning fire. A fiery stream issued and came forth from before him. A thousand thousands ministered to him. Ten thousands times ten thousand stood before him. The court was seated and the books were opened. I watched, verse 11. I watched then because of the sound of the pompous words which the horn was speaking. The same little horn that overthrew three from the ten. I watched till the beast was slain and its body destroyed and given to the burning flame. But remember... What is the entity, the spiritual entity that possesses the beast? It's the dragon, the serpent of old. Verse 12. As for the rest of the beasts, they had their dominion taken away, yet their lives were prolonged for a season and a time. I was watching in the night visions, and behold, one like the Son of Man 
coming with the clouds of heaven. He came to the Ancient of Days, and they brought him near before him. Then to him was given dominion and glory and a kingdom, that all peoples, nations, and languages should serve him. His dominion is an everlasting dominion which shall not pass away, and his kingdom the one which shall not be destroyed. Glory to God. Verse 1 in the book of Revelation chapter 17. Can I read the whole text? Let's see. Okay. Now, Mystery Babylon or Babylon the Great, another entity that is often discussed in Bible prophecy. We have the beast, the Antichrist, Mystery Babylon or Babylon the Great. What is this entity? <clears throat> Let's read what the Word of God says. Verse 1. Then one of the seven angels who had the seven bowls came and talked with me, saying to me, Come, I will show you the judgment of the great harlot who sits on many waters, with whom the kings of the earth committed fornication, hence why she's called the great harlot. And the inhabitants of the earth were made drunk with the wine of her fornication. Verse 3, so he carried me away in the spirit into the wilderness and I saw a woman sitting on a scarlet beast which was full of bla names of blasphemy, having seven heads and ten horns. There's your beast that we just talked about. Beast as I mentioned in Revelation 12, the dragon, Revelation chapter 13 and Daniel chapter 7. Verse 4. The woman was arrayed in purple and scarlet and adorned with gold and precious stones and pearls. This is royalty. This is a royal entity. Some form of perverted royalty we have here. Luxurious, rich, having wealth in abundance, so forth. <clears throat> having in her hand a golden cup full of abominations and the filthiness of her fornication. But remember, it's the kings of the earth that enter into fornication with her. This is why I do talk about geopolitics on my channel, especially the Middle East, because it's very, very... Um, relevant to the word of god and helping me share these messages with you hopefully is helping us all to get a little more understanding as we go along friends in the end times verse 5 and on her forehead a name was written mystery just like there's many mysteries in the word of god mystery something's not yet revealed and then eventually it becomes revealed babylon the great the mother of harlots, bigger than Babylon of old, which was in Babylon, Iraq. And the abominations of the earth. Remember, this is a future entity. It's regarding the end times. I saw the woman drunk with the blood of the saints and with the blood of the martyrs of Jesus. And when I saw her, I marveled with great amazement. He didn't recognize the entity. But the angel said to me, why do you marvel? I will tell you the mystery of the woman and of the beast that carries her, which has the seven heads and the ten horns. So this angel is going to reveal the mystery. So it was no longer a mystery. Verse 8, the beast that you saw was and is not and will ascend out to the bottomless pit and go to perdition. And those who dwell on the earth will marvel whose names are not written in the book of life and the foundation of the world when they see the beast that was and is not and yet is. Here is the mind it has wisdom. The seven heads are seven mountains on which the woman sits. There are also seven kings. Five have fallen. One is and the other has not yet come. Let me just show you an image just to help illustrate. There we go. Altogether, we have eight heads, mountains, kingdoms. And this is specific to the scripture there in Revelation chapter 17. And after Rome, everyone thinks that Rome is going to be the harlot, but that was the sixth head or the sixth kingdom or the sixth mountain. There was another one that came after it that the word of God does not tell us about. It doesn't tell us anything about this one. We are to know what happened after Rome. After Rome came the Islamic kingdom. 
that had control and messed up the whole region, persecution of, of the Christians, and it was called the Caliphate, and that was the seventh. So this revival of the end time, kingdom, head, beast, is a revival of the seventh, is of the number seventh kingdom. Let's go back and see what the word of God says about that, you guys. There are also seven kings. Five have fallen, one is, and the other has not yet come. And when he comes, who's he? The one that is the seventh. Five have fallen, one is, number six, and the other, the seventh, has not yet come. And when he, the seventh, comes, he must continue a short time. The beast that was and is not is himself, also the eighth, and is of the seventh. It's not of Rome, the sixth, it's of the seventh, which was the Turkish Ottoman Islamic Empire, and is going to perdition. Wonderful, wonderful word of God. Verse 12. <coughs> <coughs> oh. Take a deep breath. <laughs> Verse 12. The ten horns, which is also mentioned in Daniel chapter 7. The ten horns which you saw are ten kings. That's it. That's what the word of God says they are. And that's what we are to look out for. The ten horns which you saw are ten kings. Who have received no kingdom as yet. But they receive authority for one hour as kings of the beast. These are of one mind and they will give their power and authority to the beast. These will make war with the lamb. Did you read that friends? These will make war with the lamb. The depravity is going to be so huge you guys that this entity is going to prepare to fight Jesus Christ because the dragon knows serpent the cunning serpent knows his doom is near so he gathers these ten kings the ten horns the antichrist the beast the false prophet combined this coalition united nations of the antichrist to ultimately attack they think they can attack Jesus Christ and also the harlot, they oppose the harlot, and the saints. These will make war, verse 14, with the Lamb, and the Lamb will overcome them, for he is Lord of lords and King of kings, and those who are with him are called chosen and faithful. Amen. Verse 15, Then he said to me, The waters which you saw where the harlot sits are peoples, multitudes, nations, and tongues, and the ten horns which you saw on the beast, on the beast, these will hate the harlot, make her desolate, naked, eat her flesh and burn her with fire. For God has put it into their hearts to fulfill his purpose, to be of one mind and to give their kingdom to the beast until the words of God are fulfilled. And the woman whom you saw is the grace, is that great city which reigns over the kings of the earth. That he already explained to John earlier in this scripture. That great city. Now, that great city I propose to you is going to be found in Saudi Arabia. I've done videos on this and to be um, to make sense of what I'm saying, I'm going to play you a clip from one of my old videos. That video is called mystery babylon is connected to baal worship evidence revealed and hopefully the audio is all fine let me play a little clip from here five occurrences in the bible acts chapter 19 24 for a certain man named demetrius the silversmith which made silver shrines for diana brought no small gain unto the craftsmen let's go on Acts 19, same chapter, verse 27. So that not only this, our craft is in danger to be set at now because they were making money, but also that the temple of the great goddess Diana should be despised and her magnificence should be destroyed, whom all Asia and the world worshipeth. 
I propose to you, friends, this same entity, remember we're talking about entity, it's all spiritual, but now we are having eyes to see where it is today in the physical, okay? Please stay with me as I, as I continue. I propose Diana worship is happening today, but it's in Mecca, in Saudi Arabia. Mystery Babylon, the mother of Harless, is growing and making for herself a magnificent an abominable rather kingdom and when they chapter 19 the, the same verse straight after it and when they heard these sayings when they were upset at what Paul was saying they were full of wrath and cried out saying great is Diana of the Ephesians you could say in Arabic, Diana Hu Akbar, which is what Muslims say. They say, Allahu Akbar, right? Are you making the connections, friends? Are you seeing it? Let's continue. Acts 19:34. But when they knew that he was a Jew, he is the Paul here, Paul the Apostle. But when they knew he was a Jew, all with one voice, about in the space of two hours, cried out, Great is Diana of the Ephesians, Diana who Akbar. And this Diana was considered to be a meteorite that fell from heaven. So it's no coincidence, you guys, that the black stone is alleged by many and then in the video, I go received. on to talk about the connection between Gaba, Blackstone in Mecca, the very similar narratives of the Blackstone, and Diana the Great, the stone, the meteorite that fell from heaven. It's a very, I think it's a really good, well put together video that I did, friends. It's called, once again, Mystery Babylon is connected to Baal worship. And you remember that Baal worship was... Um, one of the main idols that the children of Israel betrayed the Lord God with. It was Baal. They went after the Baals and the, and the Ashtoreths. And it's happening today. So I've got this image here of the United States of Islam. This is what they envision. <laughs> the location when we pinpoint those beasts. <clears throat> the lion, the bear, the leopard, the head of gold the silver, the bronze, the iron, and what have you, the image of Daniel, chapter 2. The regions are here, if you can pinpoint them. And if you go on to continue to read in the book of Revelation, chapter 16, it tells you that the river Euphrates, when it dries up, the word of God actually just pinpoints that region. It pinpoints it, the river, river Euphrates. When that dries up, it makes way for the kings of the of the east. And to the east, we have all the Islamic nations. China could very well join in. Korea, Mongolia. Don't know. I don't want to speculate about that. <clears throat> in a nutshell, the beast is coming out from this region. That's it. That is the, the, the word of God is giving us the clues. And with pinpoint accuracy, by describing to us in so many ways the beasts, the natures, the metals, the form of the statue that, Dan, uh, that Daniel was helping Nebuchadnezzar to understand. The word of God is so good. He, the Lord is so faithful. He's showing us through so many ways, you guys, to sh explain to us what this thing will look like. So when we see it, we'll know. We'll be in no doubt. Um, what else do I have here? I think that's it. Is there anything else I wanted to show you? Another image showing you the Babylon, Medo-Persian, Grecian, the Islamic Caliphate, and the final stage of the beast, the revival of the Islamic Caliphate. And when the stone comes down from heaven, that becomes a great mountain after it destroys the image at the feet and brings the whole thing down, that becomes the kingdom of Christ on earth. So, hopefully that was helpful, you guys. Again, let me go through the scriptures one more time. It was Revelation chapter 12 we read from. Revelation 12 
and Revelation 13. And then we went over to Daniel chapter 7 in the Old Testament. But please also read Daniel chapter 2. And I also went through Revelation chapter 17 as well. And remember to check out this video that I did. It's in my playlist section, which you can find on my channel. Let me see if I can get to the playlist imagery. There it is. The playlist is there. Okay. And I'll be back again soon, friends. So this should be half an hour long video. I'll be back again soon. My other video regarding the return of Jesus Christ is still processing. It's been nine days. I can't cancel it. It's in the process. So we'll just have to wait and see. I have a lot more I want to share with you. And I'm, I'm doing so according to the time that is available to me. According to God's grace. The Lord be with you. And I'll be back again soon. Love you. Bye-bye.